okay, I'm starting something new. I'm going to work through uh, a lot of these homework problems that are that go along with the Feynman lecture series. So this is the uh, Feynman lecture series on Caltech's uh, website. I'll link down below, and they have a bunch of exercises. They have answers. Uh, I have not. I actually did look at this first answer, and it was very unsatisfying. But I'm not in general. I'm not going to look at the answers. I'm just going to try to solve these. Uh, one thing I will do whenever possible uh, use Python. Uh, as a little bonus, uh, if, if a solution could be solved with Python, I'll do it that way just for fun. Uh, so let's just get right into it. I'm going to start with this problem. I printed it out. Like I said, I'll link it down below. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't really worked this out yet, so I'm just working through this uh, fresh. Let's get started. Okay, so here we have an arrangement for measuring the acceleration of gravity, which I don't like that. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's okay, but that's just a pet peeve of mine. I'd rather call it the gravitational field. Atwood's machine. So Atwood's machine has a, a pulley up here and then two masses. These are two equal masses like that. Uh, pulley P, I guess that's it right there, and cord C have negligible mass and friction. Okay, so that's fine. The system's balanced with equal masses M on each side. Then a small rider M, is that the rider right there? Hmm. Anyway, this we're going to add an extra mass m to there. Is added to one side. The combined masses accelerate through a certain distance h, okay, and the rider is caught on a ring over here, and the two equal masses then move with constant speed v. Find the value of g that corresponds to measured values of m, m, h, and v. Okay, so this is v. <clears throat> afterwards. Let's call that actually V2 and then V1 is 0. Okay, so we want to find G in terms of those. I kind of like this problem because there's no numbers. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of that. Uh, <clears throat> now the, the one I looked at used work energy, which you definitely could use work energy on here, but I want to do this uh, in a, a better way. So let's start with a free body diagram. Uh, I'm going to draw the free body diagrams on here, and then we can move along. So let me draw the free body diagram for for this mass right here. Because if I want to, I can use in one dimension, I'll call this the y direction, and that's the x direction. I can say f net y equals m a y. Right, the net force is mass times acceleration. And in this case, I can get an idea about that acceleration because I know the final velocity and I know the distance it travels. So right there, I'm gonna get a relationship with H and V, I can get the acceleration from that. It's not trivial. Um, and you could cheat and just use a kinematic equation. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, <clears throat> and then I can get an idea about the forces. That's where the G comes in. So let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram for this mass right here. Uh, so I have just, I'm going to draw a dot. I have M G pulling down, and that's a, a vector technically. And then I have the tension pulling up. And I should have drawn this better, but the gravitational force has to be greater, right? This, this mass is going to accelerate down, so then this force is going to be greater. In the y direction, I can write this as T minus M G equals, that's a capital M equals, and I hate, this is one, my pet peeve. I hate using lowercase and capital M's. I'm not a fan, but I'm gonna do it because that's what this does. Uh, so that's gonna be M times A. <clears throat> now let's just go ahead and say, well, let's just call this negative A, because it's gonna accelerate in the negative Y direction, and it's gonna have the same magnitude as this that's gonna accelerate up. Why? Because if these two things are attached by a, a string of negligible mass, and a perfect string that doesn't stretch, then the relative positions of these have to be uh, constant. So they have the same magnitude of velocity and magnitude of acceleration. So that's that right there. Okay. Now let's look at this other mass. And this is after the small mass m is added to it. So I have a free body diagram for this one. It's going to accelerate down. Wait. Yeah, that one's accelerating up. That was right. I put that right. Okay. That's going to be plus. I'm sorry. That's accelerating up. I don't know what I was thinking. Why did they draw it like that? Oh, they drew it at the beginning. Okay. So this is accelerating up. That one's accelerating down. That's plus A. 
So I have, again, the tension pulling up, and then the gravitational force pulling down, which will be bigger. It'll be m plus m times g, because it has the extra mass on it, and that's the vector g. But in the y direction, I can say uh, t minus m plus m g equals m plus m negative a, because it's going to accelerate down. Now, so we have two things in common for these two masses. Number one, they have the same magnitude of acceleration. And number two, they have the same string. So since the, the string has no mass, the tension pulling up on this side has to be equal to the tension pulling down that side. So that the total tension on that mass string would be zero because it has zero mass. So this T is equal to that T, and they're both pulling up. And this A is equal to that A. That has a negative sign in front of it because this one's moving down. So I have two equations to unknown. So let's go ahead and solve this for T, substitute in, because I don't really care about the T, and substitute in for the A. So I'm going to say T equals M A, that's, no. T equals M A minus a plus M G. So it's going to be M, now I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not going to factor out because I actually want to solve for G. So let's just leave it like that. Plug that in over here. And then so I get M A plus M G. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> minus M plus M G equals M plus M minus A. Okay, so now I have an equation that just depends on, that does not have T in it. And I can solve this for G. So let's do that. I'm going to switch to another piece of paper. So I'm going to get all the G's to one side and all the A's to the other side. So I have M G minus M plus M G equals uh, negative M plus M A minus M A. Uh, let's factor out a G. G times M minus M minus M. Yes, I'm saying it like that just to make sure that everyone knows it's dumb to have those variables. And then over here, I can factor, I can, I'm actually going to, uh, <clears throat> I don't, I do need A. Let's factor out the A. So it's going to be equal to uh, A times, I need to pull that negative sign in, so I get negative M minus M minus M. So this becomes G times negative M equals A times negative M minus 2M. And, and let's just solve for G. So I get G equals A times, I'm going to multiply both sides, I'm going to factor out this negative sign. So I get M plus 2M over M. Now, <clears throat> let's just think, if I knew G, then, then I could solve for A. That's what you normally do. And in that case, imagine that the mass M was zero. There's zero mass on there. Uh, then I'd have this two right there, which is kind of strange. So the acceleration would be, should be zero. Hmm. I feel like there's a problem here. It has the right units, but if, let's say the acceleration is, hmm, G. M plus, let's see, okay. Let me just check over this. So T equals, I just don't like this. Because that was, if I divide both sides, if I solve this for A equals what you normally do, M over M plus 2M times G, then if the mass M was zero, oh, then I do get zero. Okay, I get zero, I put in zero right there, and I get zero over two m times g is zero. Okay, so I think I think it's okay. Okay. <clears throat> so now I need an expression for a. Uh, let's go back over here. So I know that it starts at v, the y velocity of zero, ends with the velo y velocity of 
just v, and it goes through a distance h. So let's look at the definition. I'm going to start a new piece of paper. Okay, so here I have the mass here, v1 equals 0. This is in the y direction, so I'm going to use scalar values. It goes down a distance h, and then here it has a v2 equals v. Uh, so let's start with the definition of average velocity. V average equals delta y over delta t. And this is actually, I guess we should say, um, I, I want the magnitude of the acceleration. I've already taken into account um, the direction. So I'm just going to use, uh, say delta y is going to, and this is the average velocity, is going to be h over delta t. That's how far it went. That's how long it took. And that's the average velocity. But the average velocity is equal to uh, v1 plus v2 over 2. It's the average. And so v1 is 0. v2 is just v. So I get h over delta t equals v. I'll just call it v over 2. So I can't find the acceleration, but now I can use the definition of acceleration. A is delta v over delta t. So that's going to be v minus 0 over delta t. And I'm going to solve this for delta t. So delta t is equal to 2h over v. Right? So if I just cross multiply, which I hate doing, then I get uh, delta t 2h. Yeah. That's right. So meters divided by meters. OK, that works. Now if I substitute that in down here, I get A equals V over 2H times V, so I get V squared. So that's going to be meters squared per second squared divided by meters is meters per second squared. Okay, so that looks right. That's the acceleration. Now I can plug that into my other equation, which I just write here. I'm going to plug it in here. So I get G equals a, which is going to be equal to v squared over 2h times m plus 2m to m over m. And I think that's the answer. That's g in terms of those properties like right there. OK, so I'll put this as a series. I'm going to do uh, a bunch of these. And you can watch them or you can not watch them. That is completely up to you. But I hope you find this useful. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.